I think so too. <laughs> Thank you. 
is also a mobile system. We will be able to use it indoors and then take it out to the golf course with us as well and utilize it outdoors during our outdoor season. So that was a big investment, but it's uh, it's the right investment moving us in the right direction. So, uh, and it, there's so many factors and so much data that goes into this TrackMan 4, it fits right in with our student body here. So. <laughs> They are going to go crazy. It's awesome, and I'm going to look forward to the opportunity to learn a lot from them when they explain to me how everything works. <laughs> so, uh, another exciting thing: our last tournament, our men's uh, fall preview down in Colorado, we actually took an opportunity to go and see uh, Mr. Dan Soltz. He's actually a chemical engineering uh, alumni from 1971, and he owns his own D Lance. He's the CEO of D Lance Golf Performance Center in Denver. He's a top 100 uh, golf digest, top 100 club fitter in the country. Uh, if there's somebody that knows technology, knows club fitting, he's the guy. And so he has graciously agreed to partner with us. He's going to share some of his proprietary software with our program um, that we can utilize with TrackMan. Uh, he's going to take me under his wing. That was very gracious of him. So I'm going to go down and spend a little bit of time with him. He's going to actually spend some time teaching me uh, some of his uh, specific knowledge and how he approaches club fitting, making sure our players are in the right equipment, the right gear. So uh, could not be more pleased to have that relationship with him, and uh, he's going to be a, a huge advocate of ours as well going forward. So, um, with all of that said, I just it's I just want to be able to share that with everybody, get that out there because. Our kids are working very hard. There's just a lot of really, really good things going on with our program, and you are going to continue to hear from me uh, because I like coming in here and sharing what's going on with our program with all of you. So um, I'm no expert on this next topic, but I think with all of the dramatic improvement in our team scores, uh, all the improvements we're making in our golf program, all of the things that we've got going on and our goals towards the future, I might need to ask Coach Tink and Coach Larson, if, are, are we bringing the juice? <laughs> I feel like we might be bringing the juice. So. Anyway, pretty exciting. Hopefully I set a good pace, Brad. Uh, thanks for letting me be up here today. And uh, Anybody have any questions for, it, for me? What's your long-term goal for the amount that you need to raise? I'm not going to commit to that number yet. <laughs> we're, uh, we're actually in the process right now. Uh, Joel has been, uh, our athletic director, Joel Luke, has been, been very receptive of me banging constantly on his door. So uh, so we're, we're looking into some facilities, where we might be able to put it, what size it may end up being. So we're kind of in the early stages of that. Um, I have some ideas in mind, but, but I really I don't want to throw a number out there yet until we kind of figure out where we're going to be. And my goal is to have this facility that we end up getting be more than just golf. I would like it to be a, a community type center as well where we can actually utilize it to do community service uh, work. We could bring in small kids for clinics. Um, we could possibly try to create a little bit of revenue off of it as well for our athletics programs. Um, so I kind of want it to be bigger, which is not necessarily always good, but uh, but if we're going to do something, I'd like to do it right so that it can be a long-term investment and really be something good for the whole campus community as well. So, yeah. Anybody else? Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. You guys can go to I think maybe a good community service project would be getting my score in their honor. Can you do that? Can you try that? Go on. Okay. Work on it. All right. Uh, next up, we're going to um, visit with uh, Coach uh, Torby about the uh, end of the volleyball season and um, all the things to look forward to. So, more? Hi, everybody. Hi. How are we doing? Good. Great. Good. Um, so, volleyball season is over. It's great. Um, it's not great, but it's it was an interesting year because it is NCAA Division II Festival year, so our season was a lot earlier um, because they pushed everything up. So our last home game was on the 2nd. Next year, our last regular season game will be on the 15th of November. So a little different look at a little bit of next year, but um, 
overall we had a pretty okay season considering what we were dealing with. Um, we saw a lot of good improvement in a lot of different areas. I think the biggest thing we can take away from the season was how much we created a different culture. Because if you talk about our culture, it's a lot different than what it was um, in, a, in a lot of improvement ways, a lot of improvement areas. So proud of that for sure. Um, Savannah and I talk about this a lot. We spent the last four months gathering a lot of information as opposed to changing a lot of things. And as we move forward in the spring season, which we'll have a lot of time with these kids, um, and as we're creating all these freshmen is, everything now will change. So we've kind of spent the last four months deciding what we need to do and where we need to move forward with what we have and how we need to change things and what areas we need to change. And starting now, things will change. So kind of looking forward to the future of that. I think we have a lot of good things on our hands. Uh, signing day is this week, so that's exciting. Um, we had two of our athletes named all conference, which is a big deal, considering we were second to last in conference. Um, Dana Thompson was named second team all conference, which, as what I'm being told, is the highest we've ever had a kid on all the Carmack team, so it's a big deal. Dana led the conference in kills per set the entire season. She never was second. Um, granted, she hit a lot of balls, more than a lot of other people, but Still, for a freshman in this conference and the caliber of what our team was, it's incredibly impressive. Um, and she's she's ranked 20th in kills per set in the country. Uh, so <coughs> it's not like she's just doing it on our map level, she's doing it on a national level. And she's only going to get better because if you ask her personally, she'll tell you she didn't do a very good job this year. So she's only going to get better, and I expect to see really good things from her. So we're excited about that. And then Tana uh, Dahlberg, she's uh, she was just a sophomore. She played libero for us the majority of the season. She was named honorable mention. So with volleyball in all arm, I think first team, second team honorable mention. So it's still pretty impressive for her to be on that list. Tana played, like I said, played libero for the majority of the season, but I, I think at least seven to eight matches she did not play libero. I had her play DS. I had her play outside. I had her play a lot of different things. So for a kid that was not libero the entire season. She she was ranked third in the conference in digs per set. And that's for a kid that I pulled on. So um, I think that's impressive. She's she's a good kid and she's only gonna get better. I think she's one of those athletes that can do anything you ask of her. So I'm excited that she got that recognition because she really deserved it. And she's starting track now. She's a multi-sport athlete, which is impressive enough. So I'm looking forward to seeing where Tana develops in our future as well. But yeah, so this is probably one of the biggest things that we've accomplished this year and kind of looking forward to see what our future holds. And hopefully all of you will be along with us on that way. Any questions? How did the how did the RMAC how many RMAC teams are still getting to play volleyball? What do you think that's gonna look like? How do you think it's gonna be on the big stage? Yeah, so um uh Mace ended up winning the conference championship, which a lot of people did not think was gonna happen. Uh, Metro beat Mines in the semifinals, and Mesa beat Dixie in the semifinals. So, kind of impressive, because a lot of people thought Dixie and Mines were going to battle it out, but neither of them did. Metro had some brilliance and did a good job. And so all four of those teams actually got into the tournament, but they play each other. So the same the same semifinal matchup is the same first round of NCAA tournament. So that would be interesting. I, I, I called Mesa from the beginning, but, so, you know, I, I think, I think, they're impressive. I think out of all four of the students, I think any of them could go far, for sure. Do they play one another because of regional rankings? Yeah, so it's all about regional rankings. So you get a regional conference call, and you just rank the teams based on what that region looks like. And just because of the way it ends up, they end up playing each other. Because there's eight teams in each region. Yeah. So it is, it's kind of freaky. I don't think anyone planned it that way, but it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Yes? What's the uh, focus of the offseason as far as individual? Yeah, so we had our, our, excuse me, our end of the season team meeting, and we pretty much laid out what it's going to look like, and it's it's going to be a lot different. We um, everything is going to be harder. So we've talked a lot about how soft we were with um, a lot of our training. Um, we and that's partly on me. I canceled a lot of weight sessions as well because, sorry, because um, we have no depth. We have two kids in every position, and if they get burnt out or injured, I got no one else. So unfortunately, that was kind of our situation, but everything 
with Coach Talcott, it's going to be harder, and he, I'm sure, is looking forward to that 100%. Um, our, our individual sessions as we approach spring are going to be a lot more technical. This fall, we spent a lot of time on the big picture and gameplay and how we work as a, as a whole, and I think this spring is going to be all about individual because if I'm a good coach, I'm going to make people like Dana and Tana way better than what they were and not just be complacent with where they're obviously now because we need to win. So a lot tougher, higher expectations, get in and get out. This is how we're going to do things. No negotiation on that. So that's kind of where we're headed. And I know that all of our freshmen incoming are going to come into that. So hopefully the other ones do as well. How does that look with the freshmen? So right now we have three that will sign tomorrow, right? I don't know what day it is. What is today? Yeah, I know, I don't even know what So yeah, so uh, we have three freshmen that will sign, and we have a lot more offers out. We, I'm hoping to bring in class of eight, that's the goal. Um, so yeah, Savannah and I were both, she was in Minneapolis at state championships, I was at Denver, Denver at state championships. On Thursday we'll head to Sioux Falls for South Dakota state championships, so we're out there, we just gotta find the, we gotta find the gems. Like solid kids for this coming freshman year, all committed. We gotta find small town kids that aren't just, you know, mysteriously hiding, which they exist. Yeah, they exist. What about Thompson? She, I mean, I just, I can't just look at it. I can't believe what she did with this team being a freshman. Do you have any idea what percentage of her created your scoring? Or, I mean, she, she had, what, 389 kills, I think, in the season. The next best was 211. Um, yeah, I think she averaged like at least five points per set, maybe six. Um, she's, yeah, don't get me wrong, Dana's the real deal. And Dana, if I do a good job, Dana will be an All-American within four years. She should be. That's how good she is. But, you know, in all fairness, we set her 90% of balls. She's not going to, I mean, if she puts up numbers like that again, then we're not doing a good job of recruiting kids. So she's going to put up good numbers, but she's never going to have that many kills. I mean, she might. I'm just saying, if we, if we do our job and recruit better hitters, which we should, she's going to have a little more even stat line. She's certainly somebody to help kill. Oh, she's, yeah. Dana and Cheyenne together, especially, will be the foundation of our process. Absolutely. Yeah. They're hard working kids. They set the tone every day. So, hands down, the two of them will be the future girl. Thanks, guys. Uh, thank you, Lauren, for that update. Uh, next, we're going to get uh, Coach Larson up here to talk to Sweet, just to, to, to preview the uh, uh, women's uh, basketball uh, weekend. And I have him on a, uh, a stopwatch right now, so uh, you have nine minutes and 56 seconds. That's it. I'll leave that last time. Up and we got 10 minutes each, and I replied back to everybody. I said, I'll do my best to keep it under 15 uh, <laughs> because it is game week. <laughs> Lots to talk about. Um, yeah, obviously, exciting week. The kids are ready to go again. Uh, good week of practice last week, and uh, starting off this week pretty well, too. Um, you know, we got two good opponents coming in. Uh, obviously, we've talked about them quite a bit already with uh, Sioux Falls coming in Friday. Uh, they're picked up. To win the Northern Sun Conference, which is a you know it's a really really good bas women's basketball conference, uh, not just women's basketball but all around you know pretty high powered conference. Um, they got a lot of experience coming back. Uh, a couple transfers that came in that played Division One or high level junior junior college basketball. Uh, you know, they played last weekend uh, down in the conference challenge and split. Uh, they lost to a really good Henderson State team. Uh, you know early season basketball. You know. Their first game, they put up 91 points. And Coach Baumann and I saw that score, and without seeing the game first, like, whoo, that all. We, we, we better lace our shoes up really tight uh, and really get in a defensive stance because uh, when you saw the score, then you watched the film, and they're everything that we thought they were going to be. They played really fast in the full court. Uh, there's not a shot that they're not afraid of taking. Uh, I think they put up. 41 threes, is that right? 41 threes in that first game, and they made, I don't know, 16, 18 threes. Uh, a lot of them in transition, a lot in half court. Uh, so it's going to be it's going to be a really good challenge for us. Uh, well coached team, 
that's hard for me to say because their head coach is one of my best friends. Uh, but uh, I'll be honest, he, he's a fantastic basketball coach. And uh, I think I've said this before, Coach Trapping, and he played up down the road at Black Hills State. And uh, he was a dynamic scorer. He couldn't defend to save his life, but he was a dynamic scorer and uh, a really, really good shooter. And they play just, they play exactly how he played. Now, they're a good defensive team, don't get me wrong, but there's not a shot that they don't like and they're not afraid of taking. Uh, so we got to... We got to really buckle down, in, not just in the half court defensively, but in the full court as well, because uh, they play extremely fast and it's one pass. And if you're not there, if you're not starting defensively right, they're, they're going to find a quick shot to, you know, and make you pay for. Uh, so it's going to be a, a really fun, exciting game. Uh, talk a lot about defense. We have to find a way to slow them down, control tempo a little bit more. They do press. Uh, Pretty much after every made basket, every missed basket, they're going to pressure you 94 feet. So, you know, we got to control the tempo and not get wrapped up and play extremely fast with them. Because you will find some quick shots too, but we want to make them defend a little bit more in the half court as well. And that's a good way for us to control tempo a little bit more. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a really fun game. Uh, two good teams facing off uh, Friday night. They got two, two games under their belt, but so do we, you know. Our exhibition games, even though they were against Division One opponents, we still got two, you know, game-like situations under our belt, so we'll be ready to go. And it's been good since we had those exhibition games to work on the things that that we needed to, that we kind of got exposed to uh, in those exhibition games. Saturday, yeah, Montana State Bills. It gets to get much easier. The team that uh, you know went to the lead eight last year, uh, they did play Friday night against the University of Providence. Uh, and I was watching their on-demand game, and boy, they, they, they raised that, that, that banner that they had in the lead eight, and that's a pretty special moment. So even though they, they lost some really good seniors off of last year's team, um, you know, we, they had that championship DNA that we've talked about that Northern Colorado has, okay, that they kind of put it to us. You know, they have that chip on their shoulder. Some kids that, you know, have been in the program before, they know what it takes to win. That they simply know what it, what it takes to win. Uh, so, you know, Physical team, uh, they don't change a whole lot. Another really good, well-coached team. Coach Wooden's been there a long time. He doesn't change a whole lot, but the things he do, he does, are very simple and make it are hard to guard. They're going to put their kids in position where you got to stop them. You know, we got again, we got to really buckle down, defend in full court, and defend in the half court. One thing that they're really good at, you know, if we don't put a body on five people once a shot goes up, they will find it. They will find an offensive rebound and they will make you pay there. Physical team, so we have to do our best on the glass that night. Uh, good weekend, good two challenging teams coming into uh, the good old gym on Bar Feldman floor. And you know, like like Coach Taker and the football team, you know, we need to protect our home court, and it starts this weekend for sure. So we're excited. Uh, you know, the one thing that I've been constantly talking to our team about is well, we just have to. We have to prepare better than we have in the years past. Uh, one question I'm getting asked a lot is, oh, you guys got a lot of experience coming back. Yeah, yeah, we do have a lot of experience coming back. We've got some kids that have played a lot of games, a lot of minutes. Um, you know, kind of my standard answer is, I was talking to Coach Mr. Mann uh, Friday night at halftime with the men's team. Great job, Coach Glenn. Great job. We just opened up the year right for basketball. It was a fantastic weekend. Getting off topic, sorry, Brad. <laughs> we'll save that for later. Uh, but one thing Coach or Tom Mann asked me was, "Yeah, I had a lot of experience." And that's he was just one of I don't know how many thousands of people that asked me, "Boy, you got a lot of experience coming back. That's going to be a great feeling." It, it, it is. It's the most experience we've had since I've been here, which is, it is a really good feeling. But you know, what does that experience do for it if you're not using it the right way? Okay, you know. Can we learn from mistakes that we've made in the past? Myself included there as a coach. Can I learn from mistakes I've made in the past? Um, how do we manage our time wisely? How do we rest properly? Our rotations, you know, how do we defend someone that's absolutely destroying us better? You know, that type of stuff. Um, so that's what we're really talking about right now with our team. And I think the biggest thing is we just have to be more consistent, okay? Yesterday, we had one of the finest practices I've ever ever been a part of in that gym right across the hallway there. It was a absolute just precision, clockwork, great focus, great energy practice. Today, ugh, not so much. 
not so much at all. So I went thinking yesterday going home, man, we got a chance to be pretty darn good. And about 7.45 this morning, scratch my head, oh, I don't know. I'm not sure who we are. So we just have to find a way to be more consistent. And that really goes back to our experience, okay? Can we control uh, the controllables much, much better this year? Uh, that's what experience is. And that's easier said than done. That's something I've talked about a lot. All right, can, can we get over the monotonous of a closeout drill every day and understand the importance of it? You know, can we understand the importance of every single rep that we have offensively, defensively, and understand that it's an opportunity to get better? And can we go hard at it every single rep? Can we control our own mental focus every single rep? Um, you know, even though I'm, you know, preaching at it every single day in practice, and I talk about that length up here at lunch in, we have done that better than we ever have. So that's a really good sign. Uh, but we have to rely on those experiences and our experience as a team is to really master that. Um, and I, I talked about her last week and I'll talk about her again because she's just a, a really, really bright shining spot for us right now. Our one senior, Taylor Molstead, you know, she has played a lot. But she has been through a lot of battles and a lot of practices and she's just really special right now. Uh, for the reasons that I'm talking about, she does not take a playoff. She doesn't take a playoff, uh, and she is making our younger kids, you know, not just our juniors, sophomores, and freshmen, better because of it. But uh, she really defines that culture, you know, that uh, we all talk about as culture or as as coaches, and that's only a, a, just a huge sign for us as improvement. And that's something that we got to get to. The rest of our players have to really grasp that same mentality and attitude. Uh, so yeah, even though I'm preaching about it at length and we're really challenging our kids and every day in practice, every rep has to be better, our juice has to be better, our focus has to be better, everything like that, uh, we are getting there, but you know, that's gonna be the difference between good and great for us this year. That really is, because I think we have the opportunity to be pretty darn good, be pretty darn good. And we'll need to be pretty darn good uh, this weekend for sure with two really good opponents coming in. Uh, how am I doing, Brad? I can keep going. All right. <laughs> I do my best. Hey, uh, coach. Yes, coach. Coach Torby and I left three minutes, so we yield that back. Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> Speaking of you too, I said it last week, Coach Torby. Uh, a good season, and we have the right person for our head volleyball coach. We all know that. So keep up the good work, uh, Coach Roy. If my handicap doesn't drop a couple points this year because of that track man and putting green, you and I are going to have a long conversation, okay? Because uh, when things are going rough in basketball, and hopefully they don't, you, you guys know where to find me back there in the squash court. Oh, there. Yes, yeah, third exception for sure. Coach Taker, question. Yeah, you, you described the two teams you played this week, one being a super fast pace and one being a, a real physical, bruising style team. Yeah. If we were to describe us, where would we? To that, how would how would how are they describing you guys as they get ready to play? I really don't know yet. That's a good question. I would like to uh, very honestly answer that. I'd like to think that we have the opportunity to do both. Um, my personality is, if you can tell, uh, walk talking a thousand miles a minute. Uh, we want to play fast and get up and down and uh, and go shot for shot with USF. Um, but if I if we do that, you know, it's going to be a shootout. It's going to be a shootout, and at some point in there, uh, I would hope to steal a couple possessions from them by controlling the tempo a little bit more. Um, we don't pass up any transition threes. You guys have seen us. <laughs> we love transition threes, uh, but there's a difference between good transition threes and, and bad ones. And those bad ones, we just kind of have to hold on to and be smart and probably grind it off in half court. Uh, you can do both. You can do both, um, but yeah, to answer your question, honestly, I, we're probably more of a tempo team, more fast paced, get up and down. That has to do with our depth that you talked about last week, that you asked about last week. And we do have some depth that we can utilize, and that's to our advantage, so we should probably get the pace up a little bit more. Yeah. But you should be able to play a little bit bigger this year. We should be, absolutely, and that, that's a blessing too. Yeah, that is a blessing too, if you'll play. Four or two posts on the floor again. Um, it probably, you know, we'll definitely play four and sometimes a fifth post too, which is that's a huge luxury. 
that is a huge luxury for us, not only for our team, but as the year goes along. And there are not many teams that can roll out four posts day in and day out and, and really, you know, uh, bring energy to the court and uh, physicality and, and kids that can score it too, which is great. It's not just a body out there to rebound and defend, kids that can score it too. Yeah. Anything else? Mr. Mann? Defense. Defense. Rebounding. Rebounding. It's got to get better. It's got to get better. Thank you. Yeah. It's got to get better. Um, yeah, I, I'd like to think that we are right now. Um, you know, we had some games we were kind of up and down last year where we were pretty darn good defensively. And then some games where you, know, you wouldn't think that we'd done a closeout drill in our entire season where we actually do two to three every single day. Uh, but that's the hard stuff. I'm getting a little long here. But that's the stuff I'm talking about. You know, okay, can you get over that monotonous and can you close out perfectly every single possession? That's hard to do. It's hard to do, and that's the stuff that we have to master for us to be a good team. Yep. Mr. Bloom. Do you have a signing period coming up as well? We do. Uh, I'm not going to get too in-depth. It's coming up tomorrow. But because, uh, you know, we could have three, we could have a few more, too. So that's the most in-depth I'll go there. Nervous days for the old coaching staff when he was But we like where we're at right there. We'll, we'll talk more about that next week. Yeah. Good question, though. Anything else for me? Hey, come on out Friday night, Saturday night. The men are gone. Of course, we don't have a doubleheader. I got one more thing I need to talk about. All right. That game Friday, our men are making a run. All right. The opposing team is at the free throw line, and it's church mice in Goodale Gym. I'm in the back row. I'm clapping away. I'm proud. I'm proud. Hey, yeah. you can't have noisemakers. You can't honk your horn like you can. All right, at the football field, but you can stand up and cheer and, and make those people nervous when they're at the free throw line. All right, I know we're all good, polite Midwestern people. That's that's all great. I love you all for that. But man, you guys got to bring the juice a little bit. Okay, I said it a few weeks ago, and I'll say it again. We had some exciting games last year where you guys were the difference. We were making a run, we were scoring offense, we were getting stops, and that, again, good Elgin got loud, and you propelled us, all right? So, now that football season is over, all right? You get juicier, because it's warmer in the gym, okay? <laughs> We're not sitting in our cars anymore, just honking horns, you gotta use your voice, and you gotta clap, you gotta st stomp your feet on the bleachers. That is all legal, and that is home court advantage. So we need you guys there, but, uh, Thankfully, that guy, I think, was all me, Coach Glenn. Just my juiciness that helped miss that guy, helped miss the free throw there. So, the way to pull it off, 30 points in nine minutes, that's unreal. I don't know what you were saving it for, but that was great stuff. <laughs> I, I am out of here. Thank you guys for coming. See you just like we thought they would be the first night, Texas and Kingsville. Very athletic team, uh, really puts the pressure on you. Being this early in the year, you're not quite crisp offensively, and so that showed at times with us. We ended up with 19 turnovers, which was seven down from last year, so we'll call that a victory. And uh, But, you know, the thing about playing teams like that that can put pressure on you and take you out of your rhythm and stuff, is that it really teaches you how to slow yourselves down, how to get yourself uh, and set up using counter move cuts, and, set, and just not running around like chicken with your head cut off, which at times we did, but I think as the game went on, we kind of started to gather ourselves, and we did a lot of really good things uh, late in the game, obviously, as Coach said, we went on a pretty good offensive run to finish the game. And, uh, and that, I think a lot of that did come with from experience, because we faced them. So that was good to see. On the defensive side, uh, just a tremendous effort. Uh, for us to be able to hold them to 58 points, I thought was really good. You know, probably if I was going to nitpick, the biggest thing was is with the offensive rebounding that we gave up to them. But 
probably the two hardest things when it comes to offensive rebounding is in zone op, zone defense, and then playing a team that attacks the rim constantly. We're having to bring help. Uh, it's really hard to be disciplined to go find your guy after you go to help. And we, there was quite a few times that we did do that. But fortunately, we did enough uh, where we still continue to make stops and, and keep them to a low percentage shooting. Our biggest goal was to make sure that they shot a lot of threes. And early on, that wasn't looking like a good plan. And they came out hot. They knocked down shots. But I'm a big believer in a lot of averages. And so when we were able to stick with our game plan and let the whole game play itself out, it uh, really came out to where they ended up shooting 27 threes and only at uh, 30%. So we were really happy with that. The next night against uh, International, totally different monster. They had two bigs inside. They were going to pound us hard. Uh, with post feeds and just a lot of duck ins and and just kind of really muck it up in the middle of the lane and for us you know we're right now having a couple guys out with uh, friend of bigs uh, and not being as big as we, we normally used to being in there uh, we were concerned we were worried about whether we have to bring double teams uh, who we we're going to bring double teams with and unfortunately for us we never had to bring a double team our guys really stood up to the challenge and you talk about the offensive rebounds on the other next night. We only allowed five offensive rebounds on a team, again, that only scored 42 points. They didn't hit too many shots. So we did a tremendous job on the, on the boards that night. And so I really was proud of our guys because you play a team like that, and they make you play some long possessions on the defensive end because they move the ball side, top side on you. And they, did, they didn't do it necessarily by the pass, which is hard to keep them from moving that ball side, top side. It's a lot of dribble handoffs and such. So I was, I was happy with our guys to keep that focus and again, really protect the rim and not allow any easy shots around there and force them to shoot contested perimeter shots. And again, it was a great, great uh, victory for us that night. So I don't know, Brad, now should we go to the clips? We'll go to the clips right now before we talk about this weekend. Uh, this is obviously Kingsville. Uh, this is our, one of our threes that we finally got going with some of our shooters as we got going. Uh, this is Alec. I think you guys got to, got to see what Alec is all about. And that's great, great coaching. You put the ball in your fastest guy's hands and get down the floor. So, you know, from that point on, I felt really good about our guys. You can just see a confidence starting to brew in them. Uh, this is a little set we run, but we were able to get open. We probably won't get a shot off this this week, but we've got two layups and two threes on it, so that'll get scouted pretty good. Uh, again, Alec just making a good move, good move, making them collapse, finding a shooter on the backside and knocking down our shots. Um, you know, again, Alec, Alec's going to be a great player for us. And that was a big shot in overtime to stretch the lead on him. And then uh, one more shot right here for a Troy Brady hitting the three against him. And, the, and this is all in overtime. So the Troy making a good play here. We got them now where they had to rush. And they, they were doing that to us earlier in the game. And then we got them rushing and trying to and panic a little bit. We were able to get a steal off a dribble handoff action. Against international here, you know, again, uh, they play extremely hard. They collapse. Uh, that's uh, Mitch Suk or Mitch Zucker, freshman, and he's just going to keep getting better. You know, he had kind of a freshman weekend where he was a little nervous and playing a little quick and a little off rhythm. And plus, you're playing a team that does that anyway. But he really did a good job with that second night. And you can see he's got range out to three. He can take it off the bounce. Another good steal by Troy Brady and finishing at the other end. You know, Logan Ehlers in the inside here has been doing a great job for us. You see him kind of get working for position there on the backside uh, of that of that score there. And he's a tremendous passer as a five man. So we like to put the ball in his hands in that dome area because he makes great decisions with the ball. And again, like I said, we just really protected the lane. We had a we got to turn them over quite a bit, and we're able to uh, get a lot, a lot of passing lanes. Again, that's Logan making a great pass, and we make an extra pass for another three on the back side. We really moved the ball well. But, you know, late in the game, about the second last 10 minutes, they were trying to do everything they could to get back in it. They're throwing traps everywhere on us. We really haven't worked on that kind of stuff yet. So again, our guys just to keep their composure and play smart and uh, not panic when they got in those trapping situations was, uh, was a good sign for us where we're at right now. So obviously that was a great weekend. And now we're just moving forward. Uh, you know, we told our guys, enjoy that on Sunday, come Monday. It's all over with because now this week is offering us some new challenges. 
Uh, last week was, like we said, a really athletic team that puts a lot of pressure on you. This week we're going to face two teams that just really stretch the floor. Uh, they can shoot the ball. they got shooters all over the place. The bigs can shoot it. So for us, it's going to be, we still want to protect the paint because they can score in the paint a little bit, but we're going to have to do it by protecting the three-point line as well and chasing those shooters off the marks and be able to, you know, get out there with good hands up and, and keep that shooting percentage down. You know, for our last, count our scrimmage in our last four games, we've really done a really good job of not allowing people to shoot that three-point line. And I think I mentioned that in our, probably our first meeting is that we were dead last in three-point defense last year. And so that's one of our big emphasis is to get ourselves up. Uh, we might not be at the top, but we're going to for sure get ourselves up in the middle of the pack a little bit more with that stat. And uh, the two first team we play in Augustana, they're a young team. They looked a lot like we were last year, uh, but extremely talented. And they they went on. They got a split last weekend. They played down in Dallas, Texas, and they've uh, and honestly they're pretty close to getting a two and zero coming out of there. Just a couple of shots go down late in the game, and they'd be right there. They've got two guards, particularly, that can shoot it well, and they've got another big that's about 6'7", six, 6'8", six, that likes to pick and pop and step out, and he can knock it down. So for us, we're going to have to do some things to disrupt the passes, hopefully, to take them off rhythm, and obviously get the shooters when they're ready to shoot. Uh, they do push it a little bit. They can get it down the sideline, and so we're going to be looking at taking that away and really going to have to get back to transition D. On the offensive side, I think we're going to be able to run our things a little bit better because they're not going to probably pressure us as much. Uh, but they're really good at positioning. They're a very smart team, and they do play really well together. And they all move together on the ball. And so I was really impressed with where they're at as far as young as they are. They do move well on uh, defensive side and, and really get into the lane on the back side, and they do protect the lane very well. So it will be a challenge for us to get into there and, and do some things, but we're going to really, I think, be able to run a little bit more of our stuff, and I think we're going to put them in a position that uh, hopefully will compromise them a little bit. The second night is Northern State, who is the, the national runner-up from a year ago. And they did lose a couple guys, but they've got enough parts coming back that they're very solid. Uh, they still shoot the ball extremely well. They, they're not as big inside, but their bigs are still capable. Uh, that was a big uh, cornerstone of their team last year was they had two posts that literally they didn't drop off at all, and they're both as good as any post you'll see in Division Two. And so they did lose both those guys, but they've got some younger guys coming up that got to play against those guys every day last year, and that shows. They really stepped into those roles very nicely this year for them. And for them, essentially, the Pentagon has been a home away from home for them this last year because that's where their conference tournament was that they won, and then they got to the national tournament, and that's where the national tournament was last year. So it's going to be, if it's anything like last year, there'll be a lot of Northern State Wolf fans there. And so it's going to be in probably both games. Uh, it'll be a, an environment that won't be friendly to us. But again, we really like those kind of challenges this time of year. We're really looking forward to getting in that kind of environment because that's going to help prepare us to get some places. There's some places in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference that aren't so friendly either. And so I, I, I think that if we can go in there and, and just keep our composure, and I think we will. We've got some great leadership from our juniors and, and a couple seniors that uh, every day they just keep impressing me with the way that they're stepping up. And, and uh, getting us to move us in the right direction. And I was kind of like, Coach, we, our kids must be on the same calendar or something because my, yesterday's practice, I was so excited. I didn't want to stop. Uh, but we I had for kids with 8 o'clock classes, and I've been in big trouble if I wouldn't have. But uh, they, they had a great practice, and today was a little lighter, so I didn't have the downside that you did, Coach. So uh, anything was my own fault for that. So we were doing a little bit of teaching today. So it, we're really happy with where we're at. And uh, we're really excited to see what happens. It's, uh, it's a great time for us right now. So with that being said, any questions for me right now? Yes? When's your game this weekend? We play Friday night against Augustana. We're the late game. And so that would be a 7.30 game central time. And I think those are online. Aren't they going to be online? Yep, yep. You, can get, you can get to it through the website. So there'll be a link on our website for that if you can't make it over there. But there are uh, tickets. It's a walk up, so you can get tickets if you plan on going over. And then, I'm sorry, Saturday we play at 3.30. 3.30, we're the first game we get to Northern State. Is that going to be a yearly thing, you know? For, going over there? No, no, this is a four year deal. And what we do is we go over to the Pentagon this year. Next year, actually, Black Hill State's going to host it. And then it's going to go to Northern State for a year, and then we're back at the Pentagon for year four. So we don't get a chance to host it in here. Um, that counts as our Western 
It's kind of like uh, the South Dakota State Tournament. It's once here and three times over there. So. <laughs> you know, assistant coaches are very important. They have a large role to play. How, but when you realized you were going to be the head coach, you went from assistant coach and an hour later you're head coach. What went through your mind? What other responsibilities did you all of a sudden feel? Hey, I'm responsible for this now and nobody else. Well, I think the biggest thing is the administrative tasks that a head coach has to do. Taking care of the budgets, uh, you know, that's those are the kind of things that you know, ordering equipment and getting all on top of that. The basketball side of it really hasn't changed. Uh, basketball is still basketball, and we still coach it the same. But uh, you know, having to obviously be a little bit more in charge of those administrative things is probably the biggest thing. And uh, with us having travel and all those kind of things going on, I was already doing part of the travel. But there were certain other parts that I did not do, and so I had to kind of get into that a little bit more. And on the fly, if I kind of catch us up, catch me up as to what we were doing with those type of things. And I had great support with that. I mean, Anita was our administrative assistant, which was tremendous, and getting me the paperwork that I needed to get to find out where, where I was, where we were with all that stuff. And, uh, and Tiffany has been tremendously helpful as well. And so. We, with those guys helping me along with that, that's been good. And I guess I should mention, now that it's official, I have hired an assistant coach. Um, last week was an official date, it was Roger Trenopole. And so he is great to have. I've already had Rock, uh, Ron Reichert on staff as a part-time. And uh, so he's actually more than part-time. Sometimes I think he loves to be here, but his wife makes sure it's part-time. She wants at home once in a while. So, uh, but we're really appreciative to have him. But, you know, to have close to those, put those two guys together, that's about 75 years of coaching experience that I get to lean on right now. And, you know, and I have 25 years, and I'm the pup of the group, so that's pretty darn great. So we're pretty excited to be able to all work together. Our discussions uh, are great. We have uh, tremendous basketball discussions before and after uh, practices and games. And uh, we've really, really had a lot of fun with these guys because they are a hard-working group. Well, we all do like you used to have one coach scout one game on back to back night. You still do like the Rogers scout one game on back to back night, or you all three? Yeah, we're, doing, we're, we're dividing it up. You know, Ron is uh, getting on a game, Rogers getting on a game, and I'm kind of digging into both of them. Um, as a head coach, I kind of need to know what's going on with both of them. And then we catch the other up to speed. So we're all kind of on the same page with what's going on. And so, you know, those guys have been doing that for a long time, and so it's, we all. We have a trained thought like process like that. You know, you, it's pretty easy to catch someone up to speed on things like that. Anything else? Well, great. Uh, we're not home for a long time. We're on a big, big road swing right now. I feel like we're an NBA team. Uh, <laughs> but we're really, that's going to be fun. But we're going to go five games in, I think it's seven days or eight days or something like that. And we're going from Sioux Falls all the way to Alaska Anchorage. So we won't be here next Tuesday because we do play up in Bismarck, North Dakota, in between those two destinations. And uh, we play the University of Mary. And so I won't see anybody here until after Thanksgiving. Uh, but uh, have a great Thanksgiving. Good luck to the women. Uh, let's keep this thing rolling. And to, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys play. Coach and I have been talking about his offense, and I'm excited to see how it, how it comes along. And uh, Coach Tinker, it's tremendous watching your team play. Uh, your kids are a lot of fun, uh, you know, and as, as I get to know them better, because they're always got their helmets on, you know, we don't even see their faces, but I see them around here and stuff, but I had a lot of fun watching your team play this year. Coach Torby's volleyball team got to watch them play, and, and Coach is right, we got the right person in place. She's doing a tremendous job, and, you know, it's just a pro as we preached our guys, it's a process, and she's, in the, she's going down the right path. We're excited to get that going there as well. Thank you very much. Let's go ahead and get uh, our shaker up here. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Great. Hey, uh, what a what a great final uh, afternoon of, of hard rock football on Saturday for the for this group, uh, for this team, for this program. What a, a shocker! Another super competitive RMAC football game that went down to the final seconds, final plays, final moments. And, but this time the Hard Rockers, the good guys, came out on the right side, you know. Uh, we talk about the football guys, right? Go back to Lombardi, Mitchkey, Jim Brown, uh, Bill Walsh, 
uh, all these great uh, the football gods we like to call them, and they uh, they've done us wrong a couple times this year, and they uh, they gave a, gave us one back on Saturday, gave us an opportunity uh, to have one, and we took it. So excited for our men that we got the job done and, and found a way to close this season out with a victory. We ended up five and one at home, and home field matters in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. And I appreciate the support of our fans and the way we performed. Uh, the horns were going on Saturday. Uh, I apologize for the weather the last couple of weeks. Not all my responsibility, but really excited that our fans really got to see our team play our best football, which is what you want. And I think you saw some of the best that we can be as you got to watch us here this week and, or this last week and throughout the season here at Dunham Field. Uh, this is the senior class that leaves us behind. I'll, I'll share those guys with you briefly. Uh, as we kind of move forward today, my goal is to go as quickly as I can, but also to give the proper time uh, to this team that we just concluded. Unfortunately, this team died on Saturday afternoon, and it's, it's a new organism has been created, which is the 2019 football team, and that is being developed as we speak. So these are the men that were the transfers that came to us from junior college that were seniors on Saturday. Of course, you guys know uh, many of them by, by their names and their numbers. Connor Silvera, Edeski Lormius, Isaiah Manley, uh, David Mayaka, Andrew Karatapian, and J.J. Banks. Those are the six that came to us as junior college transfers. And as we look forward, we're gonna continue to explore the junior colleges and what those men can bring to us. These are all outstanding scholar athletes, some of the best students we have in the program or in this group right here. So very proud of those men, the contribution they had. I kind of wish we had a couple of them for a few more games. Uh, these are the four-year players. Now, I think you guys know that Jacob Sullivan uh, uh, spent time his first season in Aberdeen, South Dakota, but he was with us for four seasons. Kevin Thompson, number 11, was actually with us for six. Uh, Connor Janvey, 35. Andrew Montoya, 56. Robert Schrock, 66, and Griffin Faggiano. Those are the men that came to us almost right out of high school uh, with every case except for Jake, and they played their final game on Saturday, and some of the more uh, accomplished players in, in the schools, a long and storied tradition of great football here at South Dakota Mines. A couple notes for you just to give some perspective on how these men uh, performed on a national level. I think it is important to recognize individual performance even though uh, it is an ultimate team sport. You know Connor set the NCAA Division II rushing record for single game performance with 425 rush yards against Adams State, a remarkable performance. He averaged 7.7 .7 yards per carry. He missed two and a half games this year. I did some math this morning. I'm a pretty tricky in Excel. And uh, he would have had about 1,650 rushing yards had he had the opportunity to finish the season, which would have shattered many records, not only here but beyond. Uh, and he also had 16 uh, touchdowns, 12 rushing and four receiving. He did that in about eight games, which is a new school record for touchdowns in a season. A tremendous football player. He, he did, in fact, uh, now the season's over, I can tell you, he did re-tear his ACL in the Shadow State game. And so, unfortunately for, for Connor, as with Kevin Thompson, who did the same, they both require off-season surgery. But what a tremendous spirit Connor brought to us. He was a pickaxe player of the year for our team, which means our players voted him as the man who represents the blue-collar gold standard mentality of hard rocker football. Isaiah Manley had the most prolific football season by a receiver in school history. Uh, he set school records for receptions with 93 in a season. Uh, career touchdown receptions with 21. He tied uh, uh, the record for touchdown receptions in a season with, at 13 with Ryan Cadwalder. And then he set the new mark for receiving yards in a season at 1,230. He finished, I think, fifth in the nation in all-purpose yards. If you watch, I mean, I could give you the numbers, but just plug in the tape and watch him play. What a spirit, the way he plays, a team captain, and set a standard of performance here that uh, – I think is really unique, especially when Kevin and Connor both went down with injury. We became pretty one-dimensional, and that dimension was 13 and 7 and mix in some other receiver play, and this guy was still uh, pretty much unguardable in our league. And then I, I bring your attention to Jacob because he often, it's funny, he often gets overlooked for his performance. Uh, Isaiah was the offensive MVP as voted by his teammates. And then Jacob Sullivan uh, led the national, it led NCAA Division II. I'm talking nationwide. He led Division II in the following categories. He led the nation in passing yardage. He led the nation in touchdowns, 32, uh, 32 <laughs> passing, 
10 rushing touchdowns. He was second in the country in just passing touchdowns alone. He led the nation in third down efficiency. He converted 55% of his third downs, which was uh, quite a, uh, which is a, a few percentage points ahead of Minnesota Duluth. And then he led the nation in total offense per game as well, 356 yards per game. You know, it's pretty rare that you're going to have a player at the national standard like that. Uh, certainly, we talk blue collar gold standard. He was able to achieve that. His last touchdown or his last play as a hard rocker on the practice field was last Wednesday. He threw a touchdown pass on his last play of practice. And his last play as a player, he threw a touchdown pass on the last play of his career at Dunham Field right in front of his family, too, who sit up in that corner of that end zone. I would also tell you that he, uh, he I can tell you now, he had a severe infection in his knee on, on Thursday. His knee was the size of a cantaloupe on Thursday. There was no chance he was going to play on Saturday whatsoever. Somehow, some way, he found the resolve to go and play. He said, I will not, uh, I'm going to go out there. We'll see what happens and uh, led his football team to victory. It was a pretty exciting moment uh, for our program. So congratulations to Jacob and his team on his accomplishments. Uh, quickly now, as we move forward, let's talk about the high octane rocker offense as we move to 2019. We did lose five senior starters, uh, but the exciting thing for me, we returned four offensive line starters. And if you actually count the fact that Aaron Wells played the, the end of the season once Jack Baffo got hurt, Five men were started on the offensive line return. So although we lose an outstanding quarterback and two outstanding running backs, we get the most important component of that is the five men in front, and they all return. Uh, we, we also return 174 receptions and 14 touchdowns. So although we do lose Isaiah, who was outstanding, we do bring back a bunch of catches, and we do bring back some guys who have produced and scored touchdowns in the passing game. And then we also bring back 80 points, which is a school record set by NSF, our place kicker this past season. So you're getting points in the kicking game and Ennis will return. We're excited about the men that return, some of whom you really recognize and some of whom you haven't seen yet that will be exciting faces here in the future. And that's the outlook for us offensively as we move forward. The outlook on defense is even more exciting, I would say, just because our lunch pail defense returns uh, virtually all of our production. If you look back, uh, our defensive back number 20, Dominic Jackson, led the RMAC in interceptions with seven. Uh, we had four true freshmen start for us this year on defense that started virtually every game, and they all returned. 84% of the overall tackles that our team had returned. So all the guys that were getting dudes on the ground, they're all coming back, which is exciting for us. And then when you add in our injuries and a couple guys who missed virtually the entire season, uh, we bring back 17 men on defense who started football games, which you only start 11, you know, unless we move to Canada. So for us, you know, we bring back some guys who have played. So where the experience was on offense this season, and you could see that once the game started, the experience now shifts over the lunch pail defense, and we're excited for those men that are coming through. Dates to remember, we go to the next play, a couple things to keep in mind now. December 19th is when we'll sign our mid-year transfers. It's the first day we could sign mid-year transfers. We will go get some players that will show up in January to start school. We'll go find a couple of key components in some of those areas of graduation. Those would be transfers. Those are, generally speaking, players from two-year colleges. There are some that would be four-year college transfers as well. So we'll have a mix. I don't know exactly what that number will look like because we don't just take guys to take guys. We make sure they're the right men when they come in. So we'll see what that number looks like. But wait for us there just a little bit before Christmas time for some announcements of some new players. National Signing Day, which includes your high school players, is February 6th, 2019. And we'll sign a large class on National Signing Day. That's a Wednesday. And then the home opener is versus Colorado Mesa. And we don't know, we're trying to get that to be a Thursday night kickoff, a Thursday night game on September 5th. If that doesn't work out, then we'll play them uh, Saturday, September 7th, right here at Dunn Field. So that's the outlook of what's coming up with Hard Rock Football. Kind of a review overall of the 2018 season, and then uh, give you a, a quick snapshot, if you will, of the 2019 campaign. So I'm open to any questions right here. We are also starting a new fundraising campaign as well for security. It's a 24-hour security system to keep Coach Larson away from the Track 4 simulator. Uh, and try to, so Ty, I'll help you out any way I can. I'll provide the muscle too. If you need to throw them out of the building, you let me know. Okay. <laughs> any questions from anybody? Just a comment. Great year. It was so much fun to watch your kids play. Yeah. We there got great kids. kids. It does my heart good to see hard rock football back to where it used to be. Yeah. 
appreciate it. I really, I really enjoyed it. And I really thank you. Yeah. Coach Larson. <laughs> like volleyball, focus on the offseason individually for your players. What aspect are you really looking at there? Yeah, so Ryan's asking, you know, in the offseason, what's the thing you're looking at? And I would tell you that in college football, there is no substitute for strength. And there's no excuse not to have it. I, I can't take any of our football players and make them into an Isaiah Manley, make them into a Connor Silvera, make them into a Jake Sullivan, make them into an Andrew Caretaker, an Andrew Montoya. Can't do that. But everyone can get stronger. I could take anyone and make them a stronger person and a stronger player. And we need to be stronger. The reason we lost the four close ones, we're not physically strong enough. Physical strength uh, leads to confidence. Confidence improves your mental toughness, and mental toughness gets you through the tough times. So that's what our expectation is right now. We're going to be pumping iron. <laughs> yeah? Uh, how did the RMAC have finished out for playoffs this week? Yeah, a question about the RMAC and the playoffs. The Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference has two outstanding co champions Colorado Pueblo at 10 and 1, Colorado Mines at 10 and 1. And they're each playoff teams are playoff bound, and they get to play each other in the first game. So they play each other this coming Saturday in Golden, Colorado. Been asked about it a bunch. I, I don't know who thinks Colorado Mines is going to win. Raise your hand. You've seen both teams. What do you think? So we got some Colorado Mines. What's what about Pueblo? Who thinks Pueblo is going to do it? It's a, just a, just one. Pueblo is the best. I've been in college, Division Two college football around 20 years. It's the best defense I've seen at the Division II level in my time that I've seen on tape that I've or I've been on the field with. They're that good defensively. It'll be interesting because Mines has had a hard time defending people in the pass game. Pueblo doesn't throw it that great. So it's kind of a matchup that looks like uh, Mines won the first one, but Pueblo dominated statistically. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens on Saturday. I'm, I'm sure it'll be physical. I'm sure there'll be blood and sweat. Go to that game? I, I'm actually attending another game. I might, one of my, a couple of my dear friends, Stacey Collins, who was the head football coach here, and uh, our former offensive coordinator, Justin Udy, they coach at Utah State now, and they're playing at Fort Collins, so I'm actually driving down to see both those guys. And so we'll see the, the Aggies play. They're having an outstanding season, so go support those guys a little bit. Yeah, Todd. I, I don't know if Tom Mann has special powers or anything, but I would like to point out that he shut down his partner Tom and said he's going to miss this field goal. Oh. And he missed it. Yeah. Hey, I, I did really. I, mean, I love it. That's classic. He said I have a feeling he's going to miss this. It was interesting. I didn't, I didn't, talk, to, I didn't talk to a single person who didn't tell me the exact same thing, which was, hey, I knew he was going to miss it. And the, you know, I think the reason he missed it, Adrian Eastman, true freshman safety, started every single game for us number 21 got better and better as the season went along, but was really struggling through times, being a freshman, doing the deal, got better and better and better. Well, we sent him on a little different game. He comes right through the A-gap, and if the kid would have been online to the goal post, he would have blocked it, there's no question. So the, the kicker kind of kicked it around him, and that was the miss, but it's interesting. We spend so much time emphasizing our, uh, they, they call them extra points, which is inaccurate. There's no such thing as extra points. It's like, there's no such thing as free throws or foul shots. They're not free. And there's no such thing as extra points or points after touchdown. And we take that very, 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 very seriously. And really, if you look at it, our PAT unit was better than their PAT field goal unit. And that's why we won the game on Saturday. And it's a point of emphasis, and I'm glad it, it worked out in our favor. Yeah, there. What's uh, Utah State's record? Utah State's an eight or nine and one. Their only loss was to Michigan State. Yeah, so they're doing quite well. Yeah, they're doing they're doing really well. Are they rated in about number twenty in the country? I don't I'm not sure. I'm not sure. What where what are they rated? Twenty three last week. Twenty three last week. And then they won. So they might be higher. You think they probably won't go low. Yeah. Yeah, so have a great season. So I wanted to just uh, quickly also say uh, congratulations to basketball on a fast start. I love basketball season. I uh, have some really good ideas on how to take more shots from three-point land. And then 
Uh, also, just I don't know when I'll get a chance or if I'll get a chance to say it again, but I do want to thank everybody for their unconditional support. The people that come to this room unconditionally support Hard Rock for Athletics and, and say, hey, we, we, uh, we support these men and, the, and their mission every single day. That This is something that's special about South Dakota Mines. I appreciate what you guys have brought to the table, and I hope I can thank each and every, every one of you on your way out. But I do appreciate it. It's been a hard season, but a rewarding season, and damn proud of you, your football coach, Rock. All right, that'll do it for today. Uh, just a reminder, uh, games this weekend are 5.30, Friday, 5.30, Saturday here in uh, King Center. Uh, 6.30, Mountain Time uh, in Sioux Falls, and 2.30, Mountain Time on Saturday. Uh, I'm sorry, 6.30, Friday, 2.30, Saturday at Pentagon. Uh, you can get tickets online, um, you can watch online, you can watch all the games online. So um, that being said, I think uh, it's a good time to end it. So uh, uh, thank you to Michelle for setting this all up. Thank you to Van Charles and uh, everybody have a good week. Thank you. <laughs>